Anne O'Connor, you're a folklorist and you want to tell me something perhaps quite horrific about children ghosts or perhaps mothers who may have murdered children. Um, I'd like to point out, I think, that from everything that we've heard tonight, I think we can see that the idea of experiencing ghosts or presences is one which is really universal. And it is in the country and in the city and everywhere. And really it's something which is part of human life and which Irish people in the past have always seen as being very important. The supernatural was always very much interblended, if you like, with the natural and a very good attitude was taken to it. There were good good ghosts and there were very bad ghosts, Mm. just like with the fairies. The particular one that you mentioned then concerns a very evil one of a woman who kills a child. It could be the ghost of a midwife who has killed a child for pay or perhaps a, a mother who has had a stillborn child or who has had a child and smothered it or something, if it was illegitimate. In Waterford and... Tipperary, the name given to this ghost is Petticoat Luce, and she's very well known. And Indeed, she is. We, we met her, in fact. Yeah, in Cork. Then there's a woman called Mal O'Shaughnessy, and it's the same spirit. And then in Limerick, there's a spirit in the barn, and it's the same spirit again. It tells the story of a man who is coming home late at night, and again, it's night time, um, or else perhaps he's going on a call. His wife is ill, he has to go to see the priest. And in this way, Dennis's story earlier reminds me of it. He is prevented, of course, by this spirit. He suddenly feels a a weight in the back of the cart. The spirit threatens him, but he escapes. He goes to the priest. The priest then tells him to go back to the same spot the next night at the same time, or a little earlier, and draw a circle on the ground with chalk and to shake holy water in it, and that the priest then will follow and that he will confront the spirit. The man does this, and the spirit comes, and the man entices her into the circle. Then he withdraws, and this priest then appears and asks the spirit, first of all reads from his prayer book, usually in Latin, and then asks the spirit what damned her. And so she usually gives three replies. The first, perhaps, that she killed her husband. The priest says, that didn't damn you. And then she says, I put milk, I put water into the milk that I was giving to the poor. And he says, that didn't damn you either. And then she says, finally, I killed an unbaptized child. And he said, that is what damned you. And therewith he banishes her, either to the Red Sea or to Baylock, as it's usually called in the Waterford Tipperary area. And she's left there making ropes of sand or doing some equally purposeless thing for the rest of her days until the end of the world. I suppose perhaps a more horrendous thought is a thought of a child ghost. Do we come across this theme now and again? We do, and here I think it shows something about Irish tradition being neutral, as I mentioned before, of good and evil. The spirits of dead children that we find talked about or recorded in Ireland are usually in relation to fairy rats, where they're heard crying or footprints are seen on the rats. Um, But then otherwise there's a a story told of a priest who meets three lights while going on a sick hole, and the first two are brighter than the other. And the first two turn out to be the ghosts of children who have been baptised and the third of one who has not. And then, happily, he baptises it on the spot and the child's light becomes as bright as the others. And so in this way, Irish tradition has a very positive view of the spirits of the children. It's to the woman who kills children that Irish tradition is rather severe.